All right, let's go and get started. Um, let me get the lights and whatnot adjusted real quick. All right, um, so let's go and get started. I'm going to go ahead and get the sign-in sheet passed around. So um, a few quick announcements. So uh, I handed out homework three uh, last time, and it's due uh, on Thursday. Um, I still have a few hard copies here. Did everybody get a hard copy of homework three? Is anybody missing one? Okay. All right. No worries. And then there's somebody else. Oh, there you go. All right. Okay. Um, most of the stuff on homework three you should be able to assess other than the, uh, the in-class exercise, which is what we're working on today. Um, so uh, I think after today everything will, will work out pretty well because that's, whoops, sorry, that's really where the, um, uh, I would say bulk of the work is, but uh, essentially that, that's what we're going to be focusing on. Um, I, I want to go ahead and go through a little bit of housekeeping right now in terms of turning it in. Um, I mentioned this last time that uh, our IT folks were going to be setting up uh, a network directory uh, for you all to turn in your homework. So I want everybody to go ahead and work on that now. So if you, uh, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and log in. Um, keep in mind I'm recording everything, so if you miss uh, something, no big deal. Um, but I want to load up the network directory and show you how it works. Okay? So, so this is how you access it. Okay, so I'm going to hit escape. So I'm, I'm here on the desktop. All right? now, you notice like right down here, that's where I would open up the start menu. Okay, if you, uh, instead of left clicking the start menu, if you right click, okay, and hit run, the, uh, the run dialog box will pop up and this is, where, this is where you can run, you know, programs sort of, I guess, old school if you will. Um, what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to type the following. Okay, so I'm going to type backslash backslash, so that's right above the, uh, the enter key. And then I'm going to type in C-I-T-E CS, okay? So, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit, uh, hit enter. So, is everybody who did that, did they have a window pop up look something like this? Let me see. Hit okay. No, oh, oh that's the wrong one. Use, the, use this backslash right there. You, you got the forward slash. Does everybody, everybody get that? Backslash, backslash, and then it's C-I-T-E-C-S. Just right click on that, yeah. Everybody good? Okay, all right. Now the way this should work for you all is this. So you'll see classes, okay. Now as you know, there's multiple sections of Engineering 111 this semester. Ours is just Engineering 111. Professor Huffman is using the one that has the dash one on it, okay. You open up the Engineering 111 one, and what you should see uh, is something like this. You should see a directory with everybody's name in the class. Now, what will happen is this. Yeah, C-I-T-E-C-S. What will happen is this. You should see your folder, and you should see everybody else's. Now, if you try and open yours, it will work, and you can copy and paste stuff into there. But if you try and open somebody else's, you should get something like Windows is preventing access or, uh, or something like that. Is everybody able to get that? Anybody having any issues with that? Yes, sir. Let me try something. All right, so right click, run. All right. There you go. And then you should be able to open up classes, and then engineering 111. It it's sort of it's sort of dummy proof because you cannot open a directory that you don't have permission to open. So you can open yours, but nobody else's. So when you all turn in homework, I mean, your homeworks are going to be just a bunch of Excel files. All you're going to do is just copy and paste them into that directory. And then what I'm going to do is just you know, copy and paste the whole thing and give it to the TA or, or, or what have you. So that should be uh, pretty straightforward. So is everybody able to access that? Everybody good on that? Okay, all right. A um, couple more uh, quick announcements, and we'll sort of get into our exercise for today. Um, Okay, so SAME ASC meeting, they're having a meeting tonight in 2241, so just so everybody's clear on where that's at, so the hallway down here, just go down the hallway, go down the stairs, on the opposite end of the uh, atrium, on this side of the building, uh, computer lab on the second floor, um, there's pizza uh, and whatnot, um, but uh, they are going to start talking about the Virginia's conference this April, um, I don't know if you all have seen in the old engineering building, the uh, steel bridge, but they're going to be building a, another steel bridge this year. So if you're interested in doing a little bit of 
cutting and grinding and welding and stuff like that, uh, it might be uh, fun to get involved with. All right, sound good? All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to go back, we're, we're going to still continue our, our discussion with Excel, but today's going to be a little bit different. You know, last time I think was a, a really good review of Excel, but a lot of it was just me showing you a, a bunch of stuff. And, and today I want you all to be uh, developing your, your own uh, sheet as well. So b before we go into the actual assignment, let me sort of show you the goal, like ultimately what it is we're going to develop, because I want you all to at least see the, the point, the reason why we're doing all of this. <coughs> all right, so ultimately when it's all said and done, you're going to be developing a spreadsheet that looks something like this. So let me, let me zoom in a little bit. All right, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and show you. This is sort of the, the end result, okay? Now, what we're going to be developing is what, what I'm calling a slab calculator, okay? So let me sort of explain the purpose, okay? So right now, we're on the third floor of the engineering building, okay? Which means under us, under this floor right here, I mean, first off, there's a big concrete slab that's supporting, you know, the, the computers and the tables and us and, and all of that. But under this floor, there are going to be a series of beams that are holding the, the floor up, okay? Now, we as engineers are, are the ones who are responsible for determining, you know, what beams need to be used and how deep they need to be. Do they need to be steel beams or do they need to be concrete beams uh, or what have you? That, that's our job uh, as engineers. But we certainly aren't going to be able to select uh, beams properly if we don't know how heavy the, the slab is. Just like we would need to determine our weight, the weight of the people in this room, the, the tables, the computers, and all of that, we also have to determine the weight of the slab. So what I've got here is a pretty simple but uh, effective spreadsheet that will help uh, us engineers uh, determine how heavy a given slab is. So in order to determine that, we really need two properties. Okay? Number one, we need the unit weight of concrete or the density uh, of concrete. I'm sure you all have heard the term density. It's basically how heavy a certain substance is per unit volume. So density is one of those properties that's very intrinsic to a given material. So for instance, water has a different density than concrete or steel or wood or, or something like that. And concrete is, is really one of those tricky materials because, you know, Mr. Smith and I, we could each mix up two different batches of concrete, even if we're following the same specifications, and just because of the, the unpredictability and the randomness of it, we're probably going to have some differences uh, in our unit weight. So having an accurate unit weight uh, is very important. So, for instance, the unit weight that I have uh, in this uh, uh, spreadsheet is uh, 145 pounds per cubic foot. So just to give you kind of a mental image, if I have a, a, a cube of concrete, it's about yay big, about like that, one foot by one foot by one foot, and I try and pick that thing up, it's going to weigh 145 pounds. Okay? That's our first parameter that we need. The second parameter is the volume. And I think that one's pretty, uh, pretty easy to understand because if I'm trying to determine the weight of a slab, I mean, think about it. The bigger the slab, the heavier it is, right? So once we've got the density and we've got the volume, we can go to work. So one of the nice things about this spreadsheet is that based on different iterations of volume and different values of unit weight, it'll compute our, uh, our total weight of the slab. So like, for instance, I've got 145 pounds per cubic foot. And let's say, man, I screwed up. It's not 145. It's 135. So I type in 135, and I hit Enter, and bam, all my slab weights update. Okay? So it's a really neat little reference uh, that we engineers can use. And, and, and engineers, we're building these types of spreadsheets all the time. I mean, if you're a mechanical engineer and you need to size a, a gear for a given engine, you're probably going to have some go-to ready-made spreadsheet that you've built. So you can go change some parameters and it'll do a few uh, quick calcs for you. Or if you're a, 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 an electrical engineer, maybe you're trying to do estimates on a power grid or something. So based on the number of customers and based on distances and what have you, you can determine the demand at a given time of day. I'm sure that there's plenty of spreadsheets that'll, that'll do stuff like that. What we're going to do is build something like this together. So if you all go to Blackboard, you see a uh, sort of a handout, an in-class exercise handout. Uh, I've got a hard copy, so I'm going to go ahead and pass this out. 
Uh, I'm going to refer to this here and there, but I really also just sort of want this to be fluid, us, you know, working together to, uh, to build this sheet. So let me go ahead and pass this around. So there's that, there's that, there's that, there's that. Is that signing sheet? Look at this way. There you go. There's that. Sir. Thank you. You're welcome. And there's that. Okay. Who can get the signing sheet? I'm just curious. Is everybody signed in? Right. Well, I'll just leave it up here, and then uh, if you haven't signed in, you can sort of sign in on your way up. Okay. So let me go ahead and close this because I sort of want to work on this uh, this together. All right. Let me close that. I don't want to save changes. All right. So uh, here, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll close this, and we'll sort of start from scratch. Okay. So uh, I've got my computer. I'm going to start off by opening Excel. Um, now, I have it here on the taskbar, but if you don't, it should be in your start menu. And I believe we've got uh, shortcuts right here. There should be a, a, a series of icons, Microsoft Office 2016. So go ahead and just uh, open Excel. And as you open that, remember, Excel has a lot of pre-built templates, you know, do you want to do a, a stock analysis sheet, do you want to write a checkbook, or do you want to do a calendar? We're just going to do a blank workbook because we want to start from scratch. We want to build our own spreadsheet. Okay? So has everybody got Excel open? Everybody got Excel open? All right. Okay. All right. So what I want everybody to go ahead and do, and, and I'll sort of walk around and help you walk through this, but I want everybody to sort of recreate what's going on on this first image right here. So I want you to have sort of a block here where you have your name and then you know obviously put your name there. Uh, I see number one, just in class exercise number one. And I want you to go ahead and just start typing in some of these values. We're going to start off building our sheet assuming a density of 139.96 pounds per cubic foot. So that's literally you know going down to the lab, mixing up a batch of concrete and going and weighing it and calculating our uh, our density. So we got 139.96. So I want you to go ahead and set this up and we're going to set the table up sort of partially and then we're going to use some of our Excel tricks that we talked about last time to sort of help fill in the, uh, the rest of the table. So I'm going to let you all sort of, sort of go to work on that and I'm going to be around. I want to see if you all uh, are, are working this through if you've got uh, any questions. All right, so, let's see, so far everybody's Good. <laughs> I'll go ahead and start to work on mine up here as well. So, remember my Excel looks probably looks a little different than yours because I blew up the, the font so everybody could read it. Now, one thing I, I will go ahead and show you. So, all right, this first cell, this A1, it has, uh, it just says ask for your name. A couple things I'll point out. So if you notice right up here uh, in that home tab, see how you've got things like font and alignment? So like one of the things I can do to this is I can hit either this button right here or hit control B and I can take that name cell and make it bold font. So you can do that or either control and B on the keyboard. And then I can also change the alignment. Like notice how all the text is sort of hugged over to the left. I can. Uh, Using this uh, alignment toolbox right here, I can either take that font and make it centered. I can take it and make it hug to the right and, uh, and do that right here. And that, it's a pretty nifty little, little shortcut. So that's just sort of right here uh, above this uh, or in this alignment uh, window. So go ahead and do names. So I'll put my name in. All right. And then we've got ICE number one. And then what we have, we got constants. And then we've got density of concrete. Keep in mind, to move around, you can do this a number of ways. I'm using the arrow keys to move around, but you can also take your mouse and just click a given cell of interest. Um, you can uh, uh, hit the tab key. The tab key will move around from cell to cell. So density of concrete. And then it's right here, and what do we have? We have 
Um, I recommend using the number uh, uh, the number pad on the right of the keyboard. I think it's a whole lot easier to do some of your computations. Plus, uh, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, they're all right there. So I, I think it's a lot easier to just go off that number pad on the uh, right of the keyboard. All right, so, and then I'll, I gotta put pounds per cubic foot. Now keep in mind, anytime I've got this just text, this is just a label. Excel isn't doing, going to do, be able to do anything uh, with the data in this cell. But this one it is because this is a value. I can take this, this value, the contents in cell D4, and manipulate it. Okay? And remember, you can tell that Excel recognizes it as a value because anytime you have a number, it t automatically takes that number and hugs it to the right. Okay? Once it does that, it go, oh, that's a number. Okay? So 139.96, and then what else? Okay, so let's see, we're in C6. Then we've got table of slab weights, and that's in pounds. And then it looks like that's bolded. So remember, I can just go to the cell and hit Control-B. It takes care of that for me. And then I've got slab thickness in inches or I guess I should inches, go ahead and spell that out. And then we have three and six. And then right here, we've got 100 and 200, and that's gonna be the slab area. And that's in square feet. Okay, maybe zoom out just a hair so you can kind of see the, uh, the entirety of what I've, uh, I've typed in. So I'm sure some of you are still working on that. I'll, I'll sort of walk around, so we got that. Got that, there we go. Let's see, how we do it over here? So you're working on it, you're working on it. There we go. There we go, there you go. All right. There we go. All right. All right, we're trucking along. Sounds good. All right. Okay, so, all right, let's go through and, and continue to fill in some of the table. Now, the way that the table is set up right now, I've only got slab thicknesses that are three inches and six inches, and I've got slab areas that are either 100 square feet or 200 square feet. That's not uh, a lot of info. I, I'd like a little bit more. I'd like my table to be a, a little more robust and to be able to handle so, some more, uh, more variables. Now, what I'm going to ultimately want is this. Everybody watch up here. So, ultimately what I'm going to want is something like 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. Now, I can go ahead and just enter those values, but, but I'm lazy. I don't like doing uh, as much typing uh, if I can avoid it. So one of the ways that you can get around that uh, is this. And, and we talked about this last time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight 3 and 6. So right off the bat, Excel recognizes that I've highlighted two cells that are, have a value of 3 and a value of 6. It also recognizes the pattern in between them. So Excel's smart enough to think, well, if this is 3 and this is 6, if I drag this pattern over, this will be 9, this will be 12, this will be 15, 18, and it'll go in increments of 3. And a way that I can do that very quickly is to use that little solid square. Remember that one on the bottom right? Remember we call that the fill handle? All I've got to do is use my mouse and sort of, um, sort of hover right there and see, see how the cursor changes? See how it turns into that black cross? Everybody see that? right about there. Just click and hold and drag. So you can see 9, 12, and 15. You'll see a little window pop up that'll tell you that the values are going to populate and there you go. All right. You can also do the same thing over here. So on the, uh, on the left side of the table, this is going to go all the way down to, uh, to 1,000. So what I can do is I can hover over or, or, uh, select the 100 and the 200 and then just sort of drag it down and it should automatically fill down to a thousand. Okay? Alright, so go ahead and do that. Hover till you get that black cross. 
and drag. And again, you'll see the tooltip pop up. Whoop. And there you go. All right. Now, <coughs> does everybody have that? Everybody got that? Okay. So far, so good? Okay. All right. So, now what I want to start doing is I want to start populating what's going on in this table. Okay? But this is where some of the stuff we talked about last time is really going to come into play. Okay? Remember last time we talked about the difference between relative addressing and absolute addressing? And remember how we would lock cells in by using that dollar sign or using that F4? Does everybody remember that? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Okay, so ultimately this entire table is going to be populated with values, the whole thing. Okay, now what, the way I'm going to do this is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get this cell right. I mean, if I cannot get one cell to appropriately calculate a value, then the rest of them are going to be wrong too. So let's sort of focus on this one cell. Okay, so what I'm going to put in this cell is I want to know what is the weight of that slab based on this density and based on this thickness and this slab area. Now, going off my handout, now I went ahead and, and included the formula. Here's the, uh, here's the formula. So the formula is that the weight of that slab is essentially the volume times the density. So a simple way of thinking about it, if I got a material that weighs 20 pounds per cubic foot, I've got four cubic feet, it's 80 pounds. Make sense? Okay, so to calculate volume, that's going to be pretty simple. If I have a slab, just take the area times the thickness. Sound good? So here's how I'm going to go about this. I'm going to say, all right, I've got equals the area. So, so remember, as soon as you type in equals, Excel goes, all right, we're in formula mode. Okay? And remember, there's a number of different ways that you can enter a formula in Excel. You can use the mouse and just click the cell. You can use the arrow keys to go over. You can just literally type it in. This is our slab area that we're working with, and that's in B10. Okay? So you can do any one of these that you would like. Again, Excel gives you a number of different options. Now, so there's B10. I want to take B10 and I want to multiply it by the slab thickness. Now, the multiplication symbol on the keyboard is the little asterisk. Now, an easy way of finding that is if you go to the number pad on the right of the keyboard, it's the key right above number 9. Okay, it's got a little star and it should look something like that. Okay, everybody see that? So I've got the slab area times the thickness times the density. Okay, does everybody see what I did there? Everybody okay with that? Now, if I hit enter, I get that that slab weighs 41,988 pounds. Right? Now, that's wrong. Okay? That's not correct. You're like, what's going on? Why are you telling us what to do? Well, let's look at this. All right? We, we've had this discussion before when we did homeworks one and two. I mean, what was one of the big topics of our first two homeworks? And our first few couple weeks in this class were units. Remember that? Now, what are the units for the density? Pounds per cubic foot, right? What's the units for the slab area? Square feet, but the thickness is in inches, right? That thickness is in the wrong unit, so we need to convert that. So let me ask you a question. What do I need to do to that inches quantity to turn it into feet? Divide by 12, exactly. So you can do this a number of ways. Okay? You can literally just take this formula and just on the very end, just tack on a divide by 12, and that's it. Our division symbol is, right, is on the number pad, and it's right above the number 8. Again, that's why I'm, I'm such a fan of using that number pad on the keyboard, because add, subtract, multiply, and divide, it's right there. Okay? So I can go ahead and just tack on a divide by 12 at the very end. That's a simple way of doing it. Okay? Another way of doing it is I can actually um, sort of enclose the C9. I can go to the C9 and enclose that in parentheses, and, and let me hit, let me take that off, just hit backspace that, and put the divide by 12 in here. Now, 
That's not going to change your answer at all, but if I'm trying to understand the formula, it, let's put it like this. If I take this Excel sheet and I send it to one of you or to a consulting engineer or something like that, and they're trying to check my math, well, now they see why I divided it by 12 because I've associated that solely with that, uh, that slab thickness. So that's one way of doing it uh, as well. There's also a number of other uh, functions in Excel. There's a convert function in Excel, which I will show you all um, later uh, when we start digging into all of the different functions that Excel has, you know, trig functions and statistics and things like that. We'll get into that later. Right now, I just want to keep it uh, simple, right? Sound good? Any questions? Okay, now, so let me go ahead and press enter. So I've got one cell that's correct, okay, because that's $34.99, and that is correct. If you have a concrete that has a unit weight of about 140 pounds per cubic foot, and it's uh, an area of 100 square feet and it's 3 inches thick, that will weigh 3,499 pounds, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to fill the table, okay? So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this fill handle, right? We'll take this fill handle. I'm just going to drag it over. Let's see what happens. Excel's not happy at me right now, is it? It doesn't like me. Can anybody guess why? Why is Excel upset at me right now? Well, that, that's one way of looking at it. That's one way. Let, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's, let's pick one of these cells. Yes, sir? There you go. Exactly right. That right there. Okay. If I pick one of them, okay, let's just pick one of them. Like, let's start off with, with the one that is correct. Okay. Remember, if, the one, if I look at the one that's correct and I click in the formula bar, remember this? Remember how this and this and this? Remember how it's highlighting the cells? Those are the cells that that formula is using to compute these quantities. Now, let's go to like this one right here. Anybody see a problem? The density count, that was supposed to be right here, it's all the way over there, right? I, I mean, think about what our intentions were with this formula. That density value isn't going anywhere. We wanted that to sit still, okay? So let's try this again, okay? Now let me ask you this. What should I do to this formula to keep that density cell where it is. Dollar signs on which, which cell? D4. All right. Now, I can, uh, the easiest way to do that is to go to my formula, okay, highlight D4, and then what keyboard button do I hit? F4. Here we go. All right. So if I go ahead and I hit F4, bam, that pops up. Sound good? Not too bad, right? So let, let, okay, let's fix that. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to hit enter. So I, it didn't change anything on the cell that I knew was right. But now let's drag that over. Okay. Those, those numbers, do those numbers, do they pass the smell test? Do they sound reasonable? I mean, we've got a slab that's 6.29 times 10 to the 11th pounds. That's heavy. There we go. All right, say, say that again. There you go. But, but, okay, you're exactly right. But we need to be a little careful about that, okay? Let, let's look at this. Let's pick one of these cells in the middle. Let's go back to this one, okay? So if I hover over this, let's look at a couple things. So number one, did that fix what was going on with the density? Yeah, that fixed what was going on with the density because now the density is sitting still, right? But anybody, all right, anybody know something else? I mean, this is right, this one's wrong, right? This one needs to be over there, right? So I need to lock that one as well. There you go. Everybody's sort of, they're already sort of picking up. So the way I'm going to do this is any time that I need to correct the formula, I'm going to go back to square one and copy and paste it again, okay? I'm not going to fix this one. I'm going to go back to the one that I know was right and fix that one again, all right? So now let's go here. And now, which cell do I need to lock? B10. Okay, so let's lock B10. So go into the formula, copy that, or ho hover over that. You know, just you can sort of highlight it. And again, what's my keyboard shortcut? F4. Hit that. 
Bam. Now, let's drag. Does that look a little better? Looks a little better, right? It's not quite accurate, though. We're going to have to fix some things here in a little bit. We're going to have to fix some things. All right? But I think the easiest way to determine what we're going to need to fix is let's just go ahead and fill in the rest of the table, and let's see what happens. Okay? So watch this. So watch this. All right? So I'm going to highlight. This is how I'm going to do this. I'm going to highlight now this entire row and hit the fill handle and just drag. Whoo! Something's wrong there, right? I wonder. Okay. Let's sort of let's sort of take stock. Okay. Let's sort of take stock of this. So do those first off? Do those numbers look right? No, we're talking about a slab that what 3.78 times 10 to the 19th pounds. That's a uh, that's pretty big. All right. Something's wrong. Let's think about this. All right. Everything was right on this row. Everything was correct, but as soon as we copied it down, we had some problems. Right. So let's think about that. Okay. Let's go here. All right. Let's hover over this. Let's see what's going on. Anybody notice some problems with this cell? We got two problems. Now go ahead, you say one of them. There you go. Okay, no, exactly right. When I locked B10, I locked the whole thing. I still wanted it to go down, but not left or right. That's one error. Anybody notice another error? There you go. The slab thickness went down as well. So let's let's think about this. Okay. All right. Let's go back to square one, our beginning cell. Okay. Now we want to create a formula such that for the values over here, it locks the columns, and then the values here, it locks the row. Right? Yes, sir. There you go. Exactly right. Now, what you can do is this, all right? Keep in mind, I can highlight B10, and I can just keep hitting F4, and it'll, it'll cycle through that, okay? So what did, what did you say again? Did you tell me? Just lock the B and just lock the 9. Something like that? Think about what this is going to do. When I take this formula and move it around, copy and paste it, these cells, these formulas will always remain on row 9, so they won't go up and down, and these formulas will always remain on column B. Won't go left or right. Make sense? If you think about it, that's exactly what we want to have happen. Because what? watch this. I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to pull my same trick. All right, I'm going to take this. I'm going to, if I can get my, there we go, there's my fill handle. Drag and drag down. You tell me, are those numbers a little more reasonable? Those are looking a little better, right? Those aren't too bad. And you can always check one by just picking a random one. Let's pick this one, this, uh, this one right here, the 97972. All right? Let's just pick this one. And let's look. Okay, remember, we needed three quantities. We needed an area, a thickness, and a density. Okay? So if I hover over this, look at what's happening. It's referring to the right slab area. It's referring to the right slab thickness and the density. Keep in mind, that density, that 139 point, well, do that over here, that 139.96 cubic feet, I didn't go anywhere, right? That one remained locked absolutely. Okay? Does that make sense? And so bad, is it? And again, the whole point is, you know, we're building this spreadsheet right now to do something like a, a calculation of a floor slab. But we did it. We made it. We developed this spreadsheet the way that we wanted it. When you all are in your career, you can write your own spreadsheets for your own uh, problems that you incur on a regular basis. That's the whole point. That's the beauty of, uh, of using this program. All right. Does anybody have any questions? I really want this to be pretty clear. All right. Everybody good? Okay. All right. 
So if you're good, then everything we're going to do from here on out is, is honestly just, uh, I guess I'd say, just, just prettying it up a little bit. Okay. So first off, let me, let me zoom out a little bit so I can kind of take the whole thing and stop. Can everybody still read what's going on on my sheet on the screen? Okay. All right. Now, because this is a table, I'm going to do a few things to it. Okay. First off, when I print this, Excel is not going to print these little lines that you can see that are divvying up the rows and columns. When I hit print and it comes out on the printer, it's just going to be white paper with a bunch of numbers on it. So I want to make it a little you know, visual. I want, to, I want to indicate it is a table. So I'm actually going to draw in some lines, like actually draw in a grid right here. Now, there's a few ways of doing that. If you notice, see right here? It says Calibri, that's the font that I'm using. I got bold, italics, and underlines. See this, uh, this right here, this little, like a little grid, and there's a solid line on the bottom? What that'll do is if I'm on you know, a given cell, and I click that, you can kind of see it, but it put a border on the bottom of that cell. All right? And that's not listed on the font, that's on that particular cell. Well, what I want to do is I want borders all over the place. So a quick way of doing that uh, is this. I'm going to highlight all this. So this is just me highlighting my table. Okay. Then I'm going to, if you look right here, I could do bottom borders, but if you notice, see that little, uh, little drop down there right there? This gives me a whole bunch of options. So I can put top borders on cells. I can put left borders, right borders. I can erase all my borders. I want to do this one, the all borders. All right, and if you click away, everybody kind of see that? It sort of you know, put, gave a little pop to that table. Now you can actually see that is a table. And when I hit print, those grid lines will show up. That'll make it a little easier for us to interpret the data that we see uh, later. All right, that makes sense? OK. Now, uh, a couple other things. So one of the things that's, that's really nice about Excel is you can not only format the way that cells look, <coughs> but you can also format the way that Excel displays your data. For instance, um, I can tell Excel, I only want you to report data to one decimal place or to two decimal places. I can have it format data to look like a date or a time or money or, or something like that. Um, I'm seeing these numbers, and I got thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, and I was in elementary school and middle school and high school, any number that had more than three digits, I put a comma in it. Y'all remember that? Help, help you visually, whoop, help you visually see that that number, you know, what was going on with it. So, what I'm going to do is this: I'm going to highlight those cells again, okay? And now if you look up here in this general or this number tab, see where it says number right there? You can drop down and there's a bunch of different options. I can you know, do a, a number format so I can do, go to a certain amount of decimal places. I can format this number as if it was money so it would put dollars and cents on it. I could turn it into a date or a percentage or something like that. I, I'm not going to do that. All I'm going to do is see right here where it's got a, a, a comma, hit that and bam. Now, it gave me some more decimal places, so I can decrease that decimal. Now, to decrease that decimal, I'll go ahead and show you this. So, look right here. See where you've got dollar signs, you've got percentages, you've got commas. See these two buttons right here? You see that? What those buttons will do is increase or decrease the amount of decimal places. So all of these numbers that are in these cells right now, the way it's displayed, it's displaying everything to one decimal place. I could display it to two decimal places, to eight decimal places, uh, it doesn't matter. Now, you also got to think context, okay? I'm trying to determine the weight of a slab in a building. It does not need to be accurate to the tens of thousands of a pound, you know? That, that isn't really going to help me. So I'm going to back that off, and I'm just going to say, ah, let's just, uh, to the nearest, <coughs> excuse me, to the nearest whole number, all right? Does that make sense? Now, let me be clear uh, on any of these formats, okay? I want to show you something. All right, do you see right here next to number? See that little, it's got like a little square with a little arrow on it. You see that? It's right, let's see if I can point that right there. Everybody see that? 
Now if you click that, it'll bring up a, like a dialog box that looks something like this. This is where you can get a little fancy with how you format a number. Now I know this is really complicated right here, but you can go in and you can say, all right, I want a, a number to two decimal places. I want it to treat as if it's uh, accounting data and I'm looking at money. Uh, I can look at it as if it's currency. Is it in dollars? Is it in pounds? Is it in yen? Or, or something like that. I can, you know, sort of change the way that Excel displays the number. Bless you. I really don't need to worry about that for this. All I wanted was just a comma on the thousands place and that took care of that. Sound good? Okay. Now, another thing, uh, I'm gonna, I want to take these data or these values, I want to center them up. All right, so I can go onto this alignment box right here and I can just hit center and that'll take care of that. Actually, let me go back to, uh, to general and let me, there you go. All right, so I'm just going to take that and center that up. I can also, you know, put a comma. I can, I can sort of play around with it. So for now, I, I just want to keep everything centered, so I just went back to, to general. I just want to show you a couple different things that you can do with, uh, with formatting. Sound good? Now, if you want, you could, here's some other things that you all, if you want to do, you can go in and uh, play around with some, some colors and font. Like if I want, I, I could take these, these, uh, these values in this table and give them a, a yellow background. And I did that by just uh, going up here and seeing this little paint bucket. I can make them yellow. I can change them to whatever color I want. I'm going to take that off by just hitting the, uh, the no fill box uh, right here. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right, and you can play around with that if you'd like. You can put boxes on the other end however you want. What's that? Yeah, that, that goes off with the accounting. What I would do is this. Highlight that cell again and just go back to where it says custom. Just go back and turn that to general. Sometimes with the accounting and currency data, that can get a little strange. I'll be honest, I usually don't use the, the commas very much. I just center it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. If you want, I, I, I would just take the, the custom off. I, just, I, I, don't, I don't use the commas, to be very honest. I just keep it on general. So. Yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that one other thing Excel will also do is if you start uh, fiddling around with uh, number format, it'll also take your columns and it'll make it wider. Did that happen to everybody else? Did your columns get a little wider when you started playing around with number format? That'll happen. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. You can change the width of a given column by either, well, everybody watch this, you can change the width of a column but look at this. See how I've got this column? Now watch this. See how I hover? You get that little symbol right there? I can do that. I can do that. I can play around with that. I can also just double click and it will sort of squeeze it in and fit. So you can, you can play around with that as well. Everybody okay with that? I think that the big thing I want you all to have the ability to do is I don't want you to be intimidated by the spreadsheet. I want you to have the ability to format the spreadsheet the way you would like. You, you see what I mean? That, that's the big point. I don't want you to be intimidated. I want you to have fun with it. You know, take this and you know, change the decimal places on this value and, uh, and what have you. I want you to, to you know, have that freedom and be able to do that. All right, sound good? Everybody okay with this so far? Okay, now the only other thing I want to show you uh, is this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go to File and go to Print. Okay, now mine probably looks a little different than yours because, again, I'm using like 22-point font. But when you go to File and Print, you should have something, you know, you'll see a little display over here on the right. And literally all it's showing you is what we've created. Okay, we've got our, you know, you'll see name, you'll see in-class exercise one, you'll see the table that you've created. Uh, etc. Now, you all know by now when we format uh, our homework assignments and, and format our calculations in engineering, I mean, we'd like something like Engineering 111 up top. We would like, you know, the date. We'd like the page numbers and all of that. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with uh, the formatting options for how Excel is going to print this off. Okay? So let me hit, uh, let me hit Escape. Again, mine looks a little different because I blew the font up so that you all could see what was on the screen. All right, so 
<coughs> I'll hit escape. Um, you all should also kind of see when you hit escape, uh, you'll see these little dashed lines that popped up on your spreadsheet. That's giving you a visual indicator of how much info is going to go on a page. Okay. Now, what I want to do is this. All right, I want to go to these tabs up top. So, you know, you've got the insert tab, the formulas tab, the data tab, all of that. I want to go to page layout. Okay, now, now page layout, this is where you start to play around with how Excel is going to print off your results. So, how wide are the margins? Are you printing it in portrait or are you printing it in landscape? Uh, is there a background? You know, and things like that. Now, what I'm going to do is this. All right, here's all of the, uh, the um, uh, basic uh, page setup right here, margins and orientation and things like that. See that little dialog box right there? Remember that? That little button sort of right there that will bring up the more uh, advanced options. I want to open that and just sort of play around with it. I mean, I, I say advanced options, but it's, there's not really a whole lot that's advanced to it because it's just basic stuff like is it portrait, is it landscape, what's the paper size, uh, etc. I want to go on to this third tab where it says header and footer. Okay. Now right off the bat, there are some headers and footers that are pre-built into it. Like, for instance, let's go to the footer. If you drop down the footer tab, you should see like page one or page one of whatever. And th this is incredibly valuable because if you're printing this off and there's 20 sheets, now I'll track it for you. you know, page one of 20, page two of 20, page three of 20. <coughs> You'll definitely want to do that, not just on, on assignments like this, but really throughout your career. I mean, that way you can keep track of, uh, uh, of all the pages that you printed out. Um, <coughs> Now we've got uh, custom headers and whatnot that we can add, or, or we've got a list of headers. I want to do something custom, okay? So let me go to custom header uh, and footer. So custom header, and you'll notice you get something that pops up looks something about like this, okay? There should be a left section, a center section, and a right section. What I can do is I can go in and add uh, some text. So I can say, okay, for the left, let's put something like engr. 111, I can put maybe, you know, over here on the right section, I'm going to put the semester, put spring, you know, seven, whoop, put spring 2017, something like that. I can go through and format it how I would like. Um, I'm just going to do this for now. I think the handout, had you put IC1 in the center, it, it's fine. You can put what, whatever you'd like as long as it's clean and, and, and neatly formatted. Uh, you can keep that... Uh, pretty basic. So let's just go ahead and, and leave it like that. So I'll hit OK. You got it? Or? Well, keep doing zero. I don't know why. What's up? All right, we'll, we'll take a look at it here in a second, all right? All right. Okay. So you'll notice, all right, so going back to the header and footer, so I went in and I just sort of specified NGR and 111 and uh, uh, spring 2017. So if you want, you can take a look at what that would look like if you hit print preview. Now you can see, now I've got that data heading each page. Now if I had an Excel file that had 20 pages, not only would all those uh, pages have the same heading, but it would track these as well. See, I've got multiple pages because my font's so big. So it's saying page one of two, and then I can look and I can see over here, here's what page two of two looks like. So if you're like, oh no, I don't like the way this looks, I can go around and, uh, and change it. All right. Does that make sense? Everybody okay with this? Does anybody have any questions? So, yes sir? Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. So the question was um, on the homework assignment on problem one, where you've got those formulas. Honestly, what I think would be easiest to do is this. If you want, I mean, you're going to have to replicate that table anyways in Excel. So if you look later on, you're going to submit two Excel files for homework three. You're going to submit this, and then you're also going to submit the, the rest of the conditional formatting and whatnot. That's the table that you're using for conditional formatting. So if you want, just type those answers out off to the side, just as long as they're easy to find. You can do that as well. You can also use 
the Excel file itself to help you with those formulas. Because some of them are a little complicated because you got the rows locked or the columns locked and you got to copy and paste it. One other point I'll mention, it's very possible when you take those formulas and copy and paste them that they're referring to cells that are, you know, off the table. That's fine. That's, that's sort of the whole point. Because I want you to understand that it will do that if you don't properly lock it. Okay? Does that make sense? Anybody got any questions at all? Everybody good? You tell me. Good? All right. So here's what I'm going to do. we got about 25 minutes left. I'm going to let you all fiddle around, not just with this, but I also want you to fiddle around with your conditional formatting assignment on homework one. I would say the biggest thing to keep in mind for that conditional formatting where you've got to uh, develop that table is this. So let me show you. Let me pull this up real quick. is here's the table that you've got to replicate in Excel. Remember the fill handle, okay? Don't just type out all those numbers. That's a lot of numbers to type out. But if you can recognize the pattern, you can get Excel to fill it in for you if you use that fill handle there on the side, okay? And oh, oh, let me ask you this. Um, does everybody know how to access their V drive? Okay, if you don't, no biggie, all right? Um, when you log on to a computer here at Marshall, you have access to what's called a V drive. It's a network drive that Marshall allocates for everybody here at Marshall, students, faculty, and what have you. You can find it by going to my computer. Like if you go to the start menu, there's a little file explorer right here on the left. And this brings something like this up. I'm sure you all have seen stuff like this. You can go to this PC, and you'll notice it right here. It'll be on the bottom, and it'll say V drive, and it should have your username on it. It should say, like mine says Michelson, because that's my Michelson at Marshall. Yes, sir? Really? Okay. Um, let's talk about that a little bit afterwards, but uh, we might have to talk to IT to get your setup. If it makes you feel better, I didn't have a V-Drive for my first year here at Marshall, so <laughs> it's not just you. <laughs> but um, one thing I'll point out, if you haven't already started doing so, bring a flash drive so that you can save some files. Also, make sure, you right there. Um, make sure that you're um, bringing a flash drive. And if you don't have a flash drive and your V-Drive is messing up, do something like, a, like create a Dropbox account. Like I have a Dropbox account, I have a Google Drive account, and I mean, you don't want to lose a file because of this. Okay? Sound good? All right, so your V drive has, I think it's like 500 megabytes of storage. You should have no problem at all for stuff in this class at the very least. We're certainly not going to generate that much data. All right, that's all I've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut up a little bit, let you all work on this and, uh, and homework three. And, uh, and I'll be around, so if you've got any questions about anything, you can uh, run them by me. All right, that's all I got, so I'm going to turn the lights on and, and go ahead and stop the recording. So.